infrequent, uh, less severe flooding, um, many more people will benefit than is indicated on that, that map. And it may be a good challenge for us to say at a 25 year, at a 50 year, 75 year, and, and if that's helpful as a, for the community to learn, that's, that's something that uh, we would want to include in our. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I just think that there are an awful lot of people that uh, are average folks that live in this area. And, and I understand their economic uh, interests downtown that have a whole different set of needs than somebody that lives out on 2nd Street or out by the church or wherever. And so I think all of those things have to be addressed if we're going to try to pull the community together and sell them something that says, hey, guess what? You know, you only have half as much water in your house as you used to have. That looks to me like, you know, you can sell that one, you know, you need to get in the car business. I don't know about that, but I think that's that's good advice uh, for someone who's, who lives here and knows people on a one-on-one -on -one basis much more than I ever could. And I appreciate that as well. Yes, sir. As I look at your map, the one with the uh, legend on the Virgin Channel, I notice you're cutting right through the where the green line is. That's kind of the preliminary idea. You're cutting through uh, some of the deepest bedrock on our farm. And then my next question for you, on this cost-benefit ratio that you guys are using, what are you valuing farm ground at? Because the way I look at this, you want me, my family, which went and purchased this ground over 20, 30 years ago, to pay the price for Finley, which purchased their properties in floodplains 50, 60 years ago, caused their own problem, and you want me to pay to drain their problem the drain Finley, improve their structures, improve their houses. So doesn't that make my ground development ground instead of agricultural ground if the only ones it's benefiting is Finley? It's not benefiting anyone else in Ohio but Finley. So what cost-benefit ratio, what are you valuing the ground at? Okay. That's kind of a multi-part question there. Um, <coughs> in terms of benefits, this benefits everyone if you just look at the disaster response that our nation uh, applies towards floods in this area. And that, I live in Buffalo and that impacts my pocketbook. Um, now, would that impact you more than someone else? Yes. I, I mean, I pointed that out. I also point out there's no other way that we can um, produce a viable alternative that does not involve the diverse channel. If this is the way that the federal government will conduct flood risk reduction, this is the way we can do it. What does that mean for you as a, as a property owner? That's, that's a difficult question to answer because it depends. I don't, I don't know your specific circumstance. I have to connect our real estate experts with you to give you the most informed answer. Well, you guys done the uh, cost benefit analysis on this to come up with this idea. What did you use for the value of the farm ground? The agricultural ground, bare land. What did you use? What is the value of it per acre? Well, what I'm saying to you is I don't think there's a uniform value across the nine point two miles. Well, range. Uh, there might be a have, range of some sort. Well, I'll be happy to take your information and I'll follow up with you with that We'd question. We'd like to know the answer here why the media is. The media wants to know the answer. Tell us now. Okay, you asked, you asked me that question before the meeting and I gave you the same answer that you asked me a, a very specific question. I don't have my real estate uh, official here today, but I'll follow up with that question. So you came unprepared. <laughs> you came unprepared. You knew that that question would happen. You was asked probably last night. Uh, you was probably, Gary probably asked you that last night. No, Gary did not ask that question last night, uh, and I came. He, he said that you, uh, the proper farm ground was not, was, uh, as the Farm Bureau sees it, farm uh, value, our farm ground value is highly devalued in your cost benefits, highly devalued. And if you would look in our county auditor's office, you would know what the cost of properties are in this area. 
you didn't do your homework. We paid $9 million to the Army Corps and you didn't do your homework. And then according, see I asked you earlier and I see here on the diversion channel itself, uh, I'm assuming, okay, the wider, and, the wider and deeper channel won't be by our home. Is that right, Mike? Um, how's that? Uh, I mean, how wide, I, I asked before uh, how wide the diversion is going to be when it dumps into the Blanchard. Okay, according to this diagram, the smaller version is, I believe, 148 feet wide. I don't have my reading glasses on. Uh, the, my husband and I personally went out. My husband took hip boots, trudged through the river last night, and it's 70 to 80 feet wide. You have something that's 148 feet wide dumping into the river it's going to induce flooding. I'm not sure. It, it could be east and west. And in a hundred year flood, that's going to be it, the flood. You're moving the floodplain. And that, that highly, the water has to go somewhere. I mean, everybody that lives here in Hancock County knows that the water will move. If you do one little thing in the watershed, the water moves to a different area. So in in reality, you're moving the floodplain. Now, I got a, I got another question, and since I see the commissioners, uh, please enlighten me and everyone else here on the six-mile diversion. Who's the sponsor of that? Who wants? Who's going to pay for that? It's not part of the Army Corps plan that's supposed to connect the Blanchard River, go through the Lye Creek, and connect into the Western Diversion. Uh, I like to be enlightened by that. It says non it says non federal sponsor. So it's I thought on page sixty six of the plan. Mm -hmm. On page one, and I, that's what I was handing, and it's in your draft report on page one sixty six. That people don't know that. Take the floor, Mr. Mr. Rogers. Well, if if I could. I gave the same answer that I gave you when you asked this question before the meeting. And the, the fact is, uh, an additional six mile diversion channel is not part of the federal plan. Has that been looked at in the past? Yes. Um, I'll have to look at that page in the report since I don't have the full <coughs> context of that page. It says, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt. It says, but may be included as a betterment is selected by the local sponsor. That's the Hancock County Commissioners, isn't? Am I, am not, I not as, right? As the Colonel said, I'm not the bar with the six mile plan. Your, your six mile uh, uh, you're, channel you're referring You're a Hancock to. County Commissioner. You should I know that. Said, you need to. Are you? You don't know about the six mile diversion. I thought the Colonel just said it's not part of the plan. Not part of theirs, but it is in the plan on page 166, and it does say that it will be taken up by. Local, I mean, local sponsor. It doesn't you say, are the local it, it sponsor. Doesn't, it doesn't say that it would. It says that if, if a local sponsor were to choose to extend it, it could be incorporated as a betterment and our plan could be expanded accordingly. If somebody Who is wants the, to take that you, out. you wrote it in your report. Who's the local sponsor? It doesn't, no one's, no one's indicated that they wish to take that on. So, you know, it's something that if somebody were to think that they would want to take that on, I mean, with we the percentages of 31% uh, of flood area, like Mr. Matisse had said, they're going to want a betterment to the channel. I I predict that you're going to add it. Well, I, as you just you look at the map, and it, 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 yeah. I bet you, yeah, I, I'm really thinking you're going to add it. Yeah, I know you told me ahead of time you don't trust what I, I say to you, and I can only restate that that is not part of the federal plan and that you've heard from the local sponsor there's no plan at this time to consider that option. Then why yeah. would it have been in the, the original plan? Uh, we looked at that uh, through the, the long planning process, uh, absolutely. We looked at the potential for connecting all the way from the Blanchard River above the 
reservoir to uh, to downstream of him. Now, I asked you before, you know, about the environmental studies and the environmental thing, and I also asked you about the bedrock. Mm -hmm. um, and you told me that there wouldn't be, you wouldn't be doing anything with bedrock and blah, blah, this and that. I, I did not tell it you would, that we do not do anything with bedrock. Okay. Anyway, you're going to be in, inducing flooding and all this other in this diversion ditch that's going to affect wildlife that's going to affect the environment and then if you can go ahead and go through the bedrock that's in that gentleman's yard i mean on his farm then why can't you do that with the river and clean out the river and make it bigger if that would make everything better then why can't you do that sure, what's a, the difference that's a very fair question um, Removing bedrock, blasting and removing bedrock is very, very costly. Uh, you'd have to remove much more bedrock if you were to deepen the Blanchard River than we expect to have to blast through the 9.3 mile. And that said that there's no bedrock, based on the bore logs that we've investigated, we know there's some that we have to you contend with. You told me with. earlier that you wouldn't probably be dealing with that. Now, which way is it? I don't think I intended to mislead you at all, and maybe I, I confused it, uh, was confused with your question. But still, it's going to have an environmental impact. What's yes. the difference? Uh, sure. So there, there are environmental impacts with the recommended plan. Um, along with that, we're required to mitigate for that. <coughs> the darker blue sections that you see in Orn Run and a lot and Lie Creek are areas that we are uh, considering for the addition of mitigation. That, that's called compensatory mitigation that deals with the loss to uh, uh, environmental resources because of the project. But what I'm saying is, this is gonna cause a lot of damage for, what is it, nine miles, you know? Um, and, and what we talked about earlier, if you've got a gutter full of trash, then the water's not going to go through. But if you clean up the trash, it'll give it a better flow. Yeah, I, and I, then, what's, you know, you're going to be messing up the environment either way. Why not just go the way Mother Nature has it going instead of creating something? And then the next question is, if you have this diversion channel, does that become a riverway that's protected that you can't fill in if it doesn't work? Um, okay, to kind of address both of those, I, again, both the proposed plan and deepening and widening have environmental impacts. Mm -hmm. the environmental impacts of deepening and widening are much greater than that of the, the proposed plan. Um, the federal, the diversion channel itself becomes what we call a completed work. That's a, a flood control structure, um, not a, a jurisdictional uh, wetland. And a, as I explained ahead of time, how do you prevent that from, you know, Doesn't turning? The, the riparian way that goes along with that cause it to be a wetland and cause it to be environmentally protected by the EPA just like the river does? Uh, I don't think so, Dave, and, and I, I guess when you say the riparian right-of-way, I'm, I'm a little well, confused you're, about what you're... Yeah, you're going to have, you're gonna have the, the, the diversion ditch, and then you're going to have a little, you know, the thing, the riparian way right next to it. You're going to have, you know... Yeah, I guess I should clarify. Um, I don't see any of those features running parallel to the diversion channel. Parallel to the diversion channel is an easement that allows access for inspectors, uh, maintainers, and first responders. Where we see riparian corridors being built are in the mitigation areas um, to restore habitat that we are, uh, it would be impacting. Well, and I went to a, a meeting where there was a riparian way being put in on West Bank Cross and they showed pictures that it was going to be this beautiful repairing way and everything was going to be nice and, and things like that well it's just a bunch of weeds and trash with trees small trees there 
Is that what's going to happen with this? Are you talking about the, uh, what the mitigation areas would look like? Um, I'm not sure. Way. I just know okay. that, I mean, even the diversion ditch, how is it going to be maintained? Who's going to maintain it? And will it become just a big place for weeds and things like, and trash for the stuff going through from the river? Okay, let me, let me answer those questions and then we can move to okay. someone else to give them a, a chance. So uh, when we turn over a project to a local sponsor, it comes with an operator's manual. It specifies the type of vegetation that's allowed. It specifies the, uh, the height at which it can be grown before it has to be mowed. And we have a routine program where we inspect these uh, structures to ensure they're within compliance. Uh, that's what would prevent that from uh, getting out of control. That's the way the federal government protects its investment. Um, it is the duty when you turn that over to the local sponsor it is, it is on the local sponsor to conduct that maintenance. But again, they haven't maintained the Brazil ditch or anything like that. Why can, how can we expect that to be maintained out there? It'll be right in my backyard. Um, all I can do to restate with respect to the diversion channel is it falls under our federal program of inspection and compliance. Uh, and, and I could point you to um, other structures uh, say in and around Toledo, that would be examples of those if, if you wanted to learn more about those and how we inspect those routinely. Yes, sir. First of all, you were saying around Toledo, I've seen some of those and they're maintained very nicely. Second of all, decay, a lot of the things you bring up is pure speculation. There's a few little facts you're throwing in there, pure speculation. I want to know facts, and so I put in a kayak at, at Liberty Landing, and I canoed up to 128. And every 100 yards, I put that oar down, and I hit bedrock. I look along the sides, and it's eroding away. It is not filling in the river. It's going on down to the river, and either at a dam on further down, or it's going to Lake Erie, it's not filling in the river. In fact, I don't understand when they say it's less flow because the river is wider today than it was 50 years ago. There was three trees down. They had leaves on them. They had just went down this year, mostly because of erosion. The banks are actually getting a little wider. Now there's a tremendous amount of trees along those banks and all types of wildlife that I saw down through there. And it would take a huge amount of money to take those trees out and do the work that they're talking about doing. I am not gonna tax, pay tax money to widen that river when it's gonna cost a heck of a lot more money than this diversion channel. I do have a few questions about the diversion channel. Also, the other question is, I do not understand the thing about farmland. There's farmland here that is going to flood less because of this diversion channel. On the Finley side of it, there is land there that's going to flood less because of it. Most of the land that's going to flood already floods. The other thing is this has got to cause a problem, and I know that flooded land caused problems with deteriorations in soil. But the soil that, uh, among, uh, the other thing is this flood would have to happen during, just like this year, during a time when crops are uh, in a state where they really would be hurt. A good part of the year, it wouldn't affect any crops at all in this area. There's a couple of questions I had about it. One of the things I was told by an engineer from another uh, county, and that is for farm equipment, uh, if there is something landlocked, that there can be a packed stone, stone way across the diversion channel for a farmer he requested that really had a problem. Is that something that could be put in, in certain places? Can you kind of describe what we have now and, and how that could change in the future? Yeah, so what we have now is we have slopes that are sloped at four to one, mainly for the purpose of allowing farm equipment to pass over. Um, 
generally, if, if there is, we don't want to create any landlocked parcels. So um, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. One is to do that kind of graph, that gravel thing across and up and down the, the other side. Another is, you know, there'll be access roads on either side, so you can access the access road and run down and then access your parcel. Okay, the next question is that they said that field tile would not just be plugged up, that some of it could go into this. So the uh, question then is that uh, most of the time they said this would be dry, but wouldn't there be a lot of times when there would be water flowing down this from that tile? Yes, so, so the goal is that we would allow tile to, to outlet into the drain. Um, you know, it, it, it's a pretty wide channel, so yeah. even with the tile water, um, <coughs> it, the thought is, is that the majority of it, since it is so wide, <coughs> mostly infiltrate into the into the channel itself. Now you guys can damp the breed mosquitoes then, right? Not necessarily. I mean it's no more than, than the other it's that type here. of environment that promotes mosquitoes? <coughs> Excuse me. I have the floor here and asking questions. I've Thank got you. I'm glad you would like into it. When you put your canoe in, did you see that big sandbar right there at 140? All them little all that dirt in the middle of the river. That's what's causing the problem. There isn't much there. <laughs> It's, it's a, there's a little bit of sand there. It's growing trees in the middle of it. Well, you can grow trees in that. In the middle of the river, and then you wonder why it don't One, drain. Uh, wait a minute, 140. 130. Is that, that closer to Finley? 140 is the road that the uh, license home. bureau is on. County home. Yeah. home. Yeah, there's some gravel there. There's very little at all. There's a tree growing <laughs> in the middle of the river. Uh, no, there isn't. Go look at it. I, I, have, I, I invite the uh, media to go look at it too. There you is. stand on that bridge and you look down that river to the west and you tell me how water's supposed to flow when you got all that garbage in there. Now I do know one. I invite you to look at it too, Mr. Army Corps Engineer. This is getting ridiculous. Take nine million dollars studying it. Clean that river out. There isn't anything to clean. On down the river, also, I had several people that had. Uh, where, uh, what and what road is it? Liberty Benton's, the old Liberty Benton School. 139. Yeah, 139. There was a lot of people down there that said, well, why don't they clean that river out of that place uh, down there that when you go along the river road? Well, I, I informed some people that's not the river. That's just a wetland. Uh, people are saying, well, all that uh, trees and, and all that uh, in there, uh, it's not. that's not the river. And so there's some people that are misinformed thinking that that's the river. That was, that was, used to be a river channel and yeah. it had, was changed many years ago. Yeah. There used to be two bridges down there and so they diverted the river. Yeah. That, that's what, and a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. And so I was told that, that you know, they don't want you to clean that. Well, that, that's not the river. Um, now we, we have a disagreement. I, 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 uh, you might be. Uh, I know I'm right. You want to go look at it? I'll drive you over there. <laughs> I go like we're at, we'll take out the little road. ditch and then we see the river. Yeah, we not listen. Calm down. down. I, I see it every day. You yeah, think there's quite a bit there. I don't think there's that much there uh, on that. Uh, the other. Um, uh, there could be actually possibility some land would drain better uh, with those tiles going into that. I see, but I'm wondering how much time or when that would be, uh, have water in it, and also I see you got more bridges here, but there are places where it goes across the road that uh, I wonder about uh, water not being able to go across there because of just regular drainage, and uh, if you would have some tile there or something that would uh, not cause that water to go across there uh, on that, that area. So in terms of in terms of all those bridges, those are small bridges, those are bank to bank, bank to bank bridges. So you you know you would cross over the diversion channel. The one low crossing we're talking about is, is Township Road 10. Um, that would probably involve some sort of slightly elevated bed with some culverts. Um, now uh, a final statement that I would make is that forever I've got farmland and I live beside this diversion channel. Um, Finley is my city. When it flooded, uh, it 
cause damages to businesses that I deal with. Um, my church basement was completely filled with water. Um, Finley is my city. There's no county and city. Fin Finley's my city. And I uh, see that it affects me when fin Finley floods, even though I don't live in Finley in that, that area. And the final thing is I had a farmer the other day who said, he said, I don't want to really say this out loud and I'm going to put myself on the line as a farmer and say what he said, but the truth is, is things that have been done in the last hundred years out on the farms south of Finley causes some of this Finley flooding. So people that say that it's all Finley's fault and not the farmer's fault, I as a farmer admit that some of the things that we've done have caused some of this flooding. That's my final word. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, at your entry point from your diversion channel where it connects with the Blanchard River, what's your elevation at the bottom? Uh, the bottom elevation. The bottom uh, elevation of, of, of where the diversion channel re enters, enters the Blanchard, the Blanchard River. River. Like, do you have that exact yeah. figure? It, essentially, it meets it meets the the thread of the river, you know, whatever the river is. What's that again? It's like, I don't know what the exact elevation is, but whatever, whatever the bottom of the river is, it meets it. What's your top of the bank right at that point? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I apologize. I guess, yeah, for the specific numerical answer, if I could record that, and I'll have our hydraulic engineer give you the exact figure. Okay, so now, a little bit further there. Uh, with the Blanchard River already, already flooded, when the uh, water gets down there, looks like to me, all your, where's the water gonna go? On west. It's already flooded down west. All you're doing is really creating a small uh, holding pond with your diversion channel with the water no place to go, and that will not hold much water, your diversion channel, or your nine mile diversion channel. So how are you gonna really help your situation? In Finley, or any place else? Yeah, well, a big thing I've explained in the past is how is half help in Finley when you have Eagle Creek, Lye Creek, and the Blanchard River all coming together at almost the exact same spot in downtown, and then you subtract Eagle Creek from there, but wait a you minute. have a major reduction. They're all going back into the Blanchard River, all that. Mm -hmm. It all funnels into the Blanchard River right. at your entry point. Mm -hmm. from, from there west, where's the water gonna go? Same amount of water, you're absolutely right. Now, the way water behaves is with the hydrograph. Now, do you have a peak flow, a peak wave that's moving all the way down west towards Ottawa, or do you have a more protracted, flatter hydrograph? That's what we think. Same amount of water, spaced out over time, so you have uh, less effect. Mike, yes, is sir. that a accurate characterization? Yes, sir. I think you're way off base. And so our problems start way west of, uh, of Finley and where this is gonna enter the Blast River. Go down the west and do some work. So I certainly respect your input. I know you have the, you are boots on the ground here and have been so for a long time. Just also offer that we have hydraulic engineers who are well trained and well suited to, to conduct the science behind that analysis. And uh, in the case of the recommended plan, I stand behind it. And back to this gentleman's question back here. Uh, uh, we should go west of uh, 128 where you canoe to yeah. and take a look at what, take a look at the trees growing right in the middle of the river, not very far west of 128. Third, I, uh, third the county line. If I can get a hold of that kayak, I borrowed it. If I can get a hold of it again, I'd like to. You don't need a kayak, you walk. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to be in a kayak because I want to put my oar down and I want to see what the bottom of that river is. I can show you a lot of trees growing up in the middle of the river, just like Mr. Hartman said. Right in the middle of the river. So, uh, yeah, I need exercise anyway, so I might kayak. Or... Sir, you have a question. Did you do any looking at the two floods we had this spring and what happened with them? Um, we looked at, I believe, one of the floods. Uh, so our hydraulic engineer uh, studied if the proposed plan was in place, what would you see with, with this flood? And it behaved in the way... Um, that we're describing. Um, Mike, can you elaborate on 
Well, I don't remember what you said, how much you would reduce, but it would be a significant reduction in, in terms of in terms of what you would have seen this. this uh, but, yes. The this reason for the question is the monitoring station on 140 showed that the river elevation at the monitoring station was 12 to 13 feet. The inundation map on NOAA would say at that point, down here from the ridge, there would be two foot of water. And we've been down here in every flood for the last what, six or eight years. There was no water on East Main Cross Street at John Little Ridge. The inundation map said there should have been two foot. My simple explanation for that is this rainfall ended up on the west side of the watershed and Bluffton had flooded, but Finley did not. I'd like an explanation of that. Sure. Um, I think, let me start off and then Mike, you can elaborate. And I think it's a way that we produce a model okay. and we run a design storm over that. And the, the key is that we assume uniform rainfall across a basin. Uh, which doesn't often happen, but it's important. What, what that helps us do is reduce uncertainty from the size of the design. What typically happens is you'll have higher concentrations <coughs> in localized areas, and you can see a localized impact that's different from the design storm. Um, and that may be the case of what you observed on the ground. An additional difference with our model compared to reality is the, the level of detail of the drainage. Uh, in other words, not every tributary and its tributary um, down to the individual you know, drainage ditch um, factors into the model. The way we accommodate for that is by applying um, you know, some uh, correction factors to accommodate not being able to achieve that level of detail. Uh, yeah, in, in terms of in terms of what the weather service provides in, in their inundation mapping, and you have to realize that that's based on weather predictions. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to predict weather and rainfall, and then producing inundation maps based on that predicted rainfall that they see. Well, like any prediction, you know, in terms of rainfall, especially when they're predicting it, you know, 12 to 24 to 36 <laughs> hours in advance, um, a lot of times you don't get the rainfall that you predict. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to predict what the rainfall is, and they're trying to actually, a lot of times they try to predict it on the more safer side so that people can prepare and then refine that prediction as you get closer to the rainstorm. So a lot of times when you find, see a prediction, you know, in terms of that inundation mapping done by the weather service, they're actually doing it based on their, what they, what they predict the rainfall to be in. As we know, you know, it's a prediction. Well, I think well, the simple take uh, the simple takeaway from that is the question. I think the assumption is that if we have heavy rains anywhere, the whole thing rises, and it doesn't. And I think this is a simple proof that a heavy rain on the west side of town does not back all the way up the river to Finley. It's very simple. Well, I think a lot of the reason we didn't flood during those times was because that was after the river was clean. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's 11 o'clock. I'd like to respect the, the media who are here because I know they have to move on to other engagements. Um, like to do is make ourselves available for them.